Okay, I'm talking about Althusser, and I love Althusser. He moves from what Bressler and others call vulgar Marxism, which just means the original um, popular version of Marxism, to a more sophisticated, I say, or at least more complicated version of the relationship between the superstructure and the base. And he does this by introducing the notions of ideological state of an ideological state apparatus. I think the plural of apparatus is apparatus, but those of you who know more about that than I do can figure that out before class and tell me. Okay, he begins on 738 uh, by saying in his thesis one, ideology, which is to say things in the superstructure, represents the imaginary relationship of individuals to their real conditions of existence, which is the base. So ideology represents our not relationship to the superstructure, but our imaginary relationship, what we believe it to be. Okay. If we look at the right-hand side on the bottom of 739, he says, he comes back to his thesis. He says, it's not their people, real conditions of existence, their real world in the base that men, because it's only boy type people who have this, it is not their real conditions, the real world that men represent to themselves in ideology. So if we were looking back at vulgar Marxism, we would have the base constructing the superstructure. Okay, he's saying that's not how it works. It's um, their relation to the conditions of existence, that there's a relationship between the superstructure and material reality in the base. And it's an imaginary relationship. Um, not imaginary meaning like totally fake, but imaginary meaning like contrived. Okay. Um, I can't remember where I left off. It is this relation which is at the center of every ideological, i.e., in other words, imaginary representation of the real world. That our that ideologies, things we believe to be true, things that seem transparently true, actually affect our real world, material world, actual lives down in the base. It is this relation between the superstructure and the base that contains the cause which has to explain the imaginary distortion of the ideological representation of the real world, which is another way of saying that the ideology distorts the material reality and that the relationship between the two is the cause of the distortion. It's not just ideology that distorts or material relations that distort, um, and start to affect effect and ideology, but that the imaginary relationship between the two, which is to say he thinks that the base and the superstructure affect each other, cause us to do things in the material world with our labor. Okay. Um, thesis two. This is on the bottom left-hand side of 740. Ideology has a material existence. This is directly con contradicting what Marx and Engels originally said. Marx and Engels have the base and the superstructure. Material reality and ideology. Althusser is saying that ideology has a material existence. And what he means by that is that ideology shows up in the things that we do, not just that the things we do require or create certain ideologies, but that certain ideologies 
beliefs, worldviews, things that seem transparently true, affect what we do in the real world, affect where we place our labor. Okay. Across the next column on the right-hand side, but a little bit higher, he says at the end of the paragraph, I now return to this thesis, the one I just explained, an ideology always exists in an apparatus and its practice or practices, this existence is material. Okay, he calls these ideological state apparatus apparatuses, I'll say apparatuses, and then you can tell me in class what it really is. Those of you who know your Latin. Um, so here's my chalkboard, and it looks a lot like it did before, but a couple of things are different. And the thing that's most different is that the arrow between base and superstructure now goes both ways. So that Marx had it so that the base created, required a superstructure. Althusser has it that they go back and forth, that they're influencing each other. And they influencing, influence each other by ideological state apparatuses. Okay. Ideological state apparatuses are in all of these blue ideologies, but they, sh uh -oh. but they show up in um, actual apparatuses, like schools, prisons, churches, et cetera, so et cetera, meaning like synagogues or mosques, hospitals, things that are run by the state. Um, this could include elections that we have to act out or go to or do. And that those things aren't just created by the base, but that those things actually affect our material reality, what we do with labor and with wealth. So let me not get to the very bottom right now. When he says that they're all acted out, or as he puts it, um, embodied in a material reality, what he means is that there isn't just school but that you go to school and going to school requires you to do and learn certain things. And those certain things reinforce and in fact create your material reality, what you're willing to do labor-wise, your attitude toward wealth and where you end up putting it. Prisons, churches, hospitals, to stick with schools, because this is my most immediate experience having children um, and teaching at a college. When you go to school, as a small child, you learn your numbers and your colors and you learn to cut things out with scissors and you learn to um, uh, represent um, you learn to read or represent artistically somehow the world in which you live. Um, and what Althusser would say is, yes, sort of, but what you really learn is how to stand in line. And it's fucking true. If you go to school, a preschool maybe, or even a kindergarten, what you see is children learning to stand in line. And that is, primarily a Western ideological position, which means wait your turn, you're not the most important person, all of us are equally important, and the random way in which you got into line determines several things. First of all, you get into line, no kidding, based on whether you're a boy type person or a girl type person, which at this age probably means whether you're a penis type person or a clitoris type person. So there's the boys line and the girls line and the order in which you get in line and I'm shouting at you, how quiet you are, how still you are, 
determines when you get to go to the bathroom or when you get to get a drink of water. You have to stand in line for those things. And strangely for maybe parents or people um, who think about this, you spend the first two or three years of a child's life teaching the child to pay attention to, you say, pay attention to your body. Are you hungry? Are you sure you're not hungry? Are you tired? Are you sure you're not tired? Do you need to go to the bathroom? Are you sure you don't need to go to the bathroom? Are you thirsty? Listen to your body. Take a nap if you're tired. Go pee if you got to go pee. Eat if you're hungry. Okay. And all of a sudden, when you learn to stand in line, what you learn is that those things that you thought you were in charge of, like your body, are actually controlled by the school or the state. Whether you're a boy or a girl, whether you get to go pee or get water, whether you get a sticker on your homework, um, whether you get like a S or a U or S plus or however they do it, all of that is controlled by the state, just very literally, in a way to teach you, I would say, how to be a good member of the proletariat. You stand in line, you stop listening to your body, you do what someone else tells you to do. And Althusser would say that that's what you learn when you go to school. And that while you're learning that in school, there's an ideology, which is presumably like we want our children to be educated and behaved and we think children should learn certain things and behave in a certain way. And so that gets acted out, that ideology gets acted out in the material world where we, which the base locates, which is to say you do the thing that the ideology requires you to do. Another example, you go to the hospital. What do you learn when you go to the hospital? You learn to wait. You learn that someone else knows more about your body than you do. You learn that the state or big pharma or somebody is regulating drugs and telling you what your body needs. And the ideology here is that is education and, and it's not even like it's not true, but that there's learning that has occurred and doctors know more than you do about disease. And so it's helpful to have someone tell you, but what that telling is called is diagnosing, turning you into literally a patient, a subject. Okay, and then you put your clothes back on and you go get the drugs and then you are doing things, you're participating in material reality based on this ideology, an ideological state apparatus. He talks a lot about religious poetry, but also religion. You go to church or wherever. You kneel when you're meant to kneel. You say prayers by rote. You do all of those things. And that's what, because the ideology here is that a good Presbyterian does these things and will go to heaven or something or be a good person or be happier or know more about the truth. And so you go to church and you do these things and that exists in the level of the material world. Okay, so those things he calls ideolo ideological state apparatuses um, and uh, he notes that when we practice them, I'm sorry, he notes that um, they exist because we practice them. 
that what's in the superstructure and ideology shows up in the base in our material world. So we talked about this a little bit in class, like the meek shall inherit the earth. I believe that because I go to church and say that that is true, right? And then I, in my actual material reality, learn that it's fine for me to be earning $9 an hour because the meek shall inherit the earth. So I work for $9 an hour. Or I go to school and learn that I'm a girl or a boy. And then in my material, real world reality, I have a girl, I am a girl type person or a boy type person. And you know that because I choose the right bathroom or I wear the right clothes or I have sex with the right people. And the, the ideologies turn up in the material world. More than that, they almost constitute our actions in the material world. And so when he says that there's an imaginary relationship between the individual and the ideology, what he means is that it's not just like I work for $9 an hour and then that's why I believe that that's why I believe from my pastor or whoever minister that the meek shall inherit the earth. It's that doing the thing is creating the um, illusion of this, of this um, ideology or rather that the ideology is only ever manifested in my doing that thing that the meek shall inherit the earth isn't a result of my earning nine dollars an hour it's the reason that i'm willing to earn nine dollars an hour and it's made true by the fact that i actually have a job that pays me nine dollars an hour sort of ranting here because I like it and because I want everyone to be pissed off. Okay. Ideology has a material existence. <clears throat> he also talks about um, several things, but on 744, he talks about um, uh, interpolation or hailing the subject. Hailing means like hailing a cab, like you hail a cab and the cab driver knows because you like do this to pull over because you want a ride. Um, but he means hailing the subject where someone says, hey, you. And you automatically know that you are a subject who might be responsive to that. So when an ideology says, good Christians do this, you think, well, I'm a good Christian, so I guess I will go to church every week and pay my tithing, okay, and kneel at prayers, and so you do that. Or if an ideology interpolates the subject or hails the subject and says something like, um, uh, What's another one that would come from an apparatus? Um, uh, good citizens or successful people get good educations. That the, you think, I'm a good citizen and I'm a smart person, so I get a successful education, which means I learn whether I'm a boy or a girl and I learn to stand in line. And I learned to go to college and do exactly what the fuck my professor tells me to do. For example, you're watching this video. Um, and that's hailing the subject where you're like, hey, person who wants to be a person, the ideology is telling you to do these things and that the ideology is manifested in my actions. Okay, the last thing I want to read from here is, I think, the very end. No, not quite. It's the second to last paragraph on 746 on the right-hand side. And he's talking about, he talks about 
um, uh, okay, I'm going to skip the introductory sentences. So at the top right hand side of 746, this last note gives us the meaning of this ambiguity, which is merely a reflection of the effect which produces it. The individual is interpolated as a free subject. This is why I have the cartoon of the cow, right? Who can choose to go in the left-hand side or the right-hand side. A free subject, I have choices. In order, remember also, I have choices. I can, I can be a member of any of these five banks or pay attention to or, or give my money to any of these eight corporations that own everything. I have many choices. I'm a free subject. The individual is interpolated as a free subject in order that he shall submit freely to the commandments of the subject, capital S subject. Meaning like we are subjects who can choose, but also subject to what is available to us. In other words, i.e., in order that he shall freely accept his subjection. I have choices. For example, there's a common example in sociology where you say something like, I have choices. I can work for $9 an hour or starve to death. I get to choose. Uh, called the freedom to starve, I think. Freely accept his subjection i.e., in other words, in order that he shall make the gestures and actions of his subjection all by himself. I am choosing to go in the left-hand door to the slaughterhouse, or I'm choosing to go in the right-hand door to the slaughterhouse. I make the gestures and actions of my subjection all by myself. There are no subjects, people who act, except by and for their subjection, being subjected to something. That is why they, quote, work all by themselves. Okay. Good. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, um, I'll see you in class. And if you really want to test um, the ability of Altusair to um, affect your own material conditions of existence, maybe you will disrupt class or something that he would approve of. <laughs>